Hello everyone, we are back, everything has been sorted out, and we're gonna be getting back into the zones on Hammerhead. But yes, Bio, what was it we were talking about? What, we saw a sneak peek of these comps. What are you thinking we're gonna be seeing from here? Definitely a big clash between the E leader and the ball point. Uh, the, the two probably most killer backlines in the game right now, um, with E leader especially having this dominance on such an open and straightforward map such as this one. But ASC Tenchi is going to be getting very creative with that 96. Uh, and as, as we mentioned before our break, uh, that leader is going to be having a hard time actually uh, taking calm calculated shots if it's always being pelted with uh, fizzy bombs, if it's being hunted down by a Kraken, if it's being uh, ink jetted, stuff like that. And just as I say that, that is a crab, um, is a crab Kraken push from please uh, from ASC Tenchi and the Kraken going so far in they have a 96 behind them already got a pick on the Viper and all of please forfeit is being followed onto the left side but did they get a pick on on one of the members of ASC Tenchi two down on ASC Tenchi although Sev is managing to get a few picks it is really only them and that split positioning from ASC Tenchi ended up backfiring as they're now struggling to regroup. You know, like what we saw the nicest go, so that's kind of what we're going to want, or ASC Tenchi is going to want to be, or even where we're seeing Zenith and Concord here, like just, they have to be able to push up past the mid area if they want to really lock out the E leader, because the E leader, their, their advantage is when they have defense in the mid, or if they have attacking while ASC Tenchi is still trying to control zone in mid, because they, they just know where to hide, but now with ASC Tenchi, push back like this like we're down to 20 points and they're they don't have any specials to push out with for sure and it's 10 points remaining it's 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 uneven it's a man advantage they only have our crab hey since you need to go now but that crab just instantly gets shut down by the tri slosher and please forfeit take that game a hundred zero even though asc tenji had some good moments there especially at the beginning please forfeit just kind of took the zone and went with it and there wasn't really much ASC Tenchi managed to do, they just kind of got staggered, they weren't able to fully regroup with enough specials to push back, please forfeit's constant aggression with their composition, and that's going to be 1-0 on the side of please forfeit. I am incredibly surprised that uh, please forfeit was able to survive, where they had three members in that one corner, they were pushed back all the way to the right side, but they stayed. They were able to stay alive long enough to get the picks they needed to stay out. Like, even though the E-Leader went down to the 96, by that point, the 96 was the only one remaining, so the other three remaining pairs just pushed them on out. And then, as you saw, the uh, Police Forfeit pushed up so far into the base, like, they didn't have any space to get back to zone. Mm, for sure, and yeah, and all those allegations that I said saying, ooh, the leader, ooh, the e leader is going to struggle here against the ball point and stuff like that, nope color me corrected because that e leader was having free reign we saw it we saw they would just manage to take so many pot shots and just have really mm -hmm. no issue and now we're going right back for the third time in a row we are going right back to splat zones wahoo world i believe this is definitely something that is going to favor please forfeit yet again as we saw in our last set especially with that e leader as it just gets so much free space with this map having such little cover. But do you think we're going to be seeing any comp changes on the side of ASC Tenchi? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think so. Like, I don't think we're going to be seeing the return of the 96. That feels like a very Hammerhead type mm. of pick. But Wahoo was one of the counter picks that ASC Tenchi brought out last time. And even though they lost on it, it does seem to mean that they favor this. So I imagine they're going to be going back to that double splash machine and possibly the ball point. If not, definitely going to bring something else very aggro, but against the E-Leader, like, again, the E-Leader sets up in mid, there's just a lot of high ground and a lot of vantage point you can have. Mm, for sure. I do, like you said, I, I agree completely. I do think there, we will not be seeing the 96 Deco come back, and we'll probably see them go back to their winner's semi-composition, which is Double Splash Machine uh, Ballpoint. Hey, please forfeit, not with no changes. Oh While, wow! Never mind. ASD Tenchi is confident in their 96 pick. There's another fluke. We're gonna see what this thing can do. And well, they want to roll with it. They want to roll with it. Both teams trying to break the neutral here. Yosha going for a pick, not quite able to, but still not enough. The machine gets picked um, very quickly with that overextension on the left thigh. However, it's, the, it's got even. It gets evened out by the crab tank. 
But 96 going for a pick behind, trying to get the pick, not quite, and it is 3v3 again with ASC Tenchi slowly pushing their way forward, but it's going to be quickly shut down by a pick from the E-Leader to even things out yet again. I feel like the 96 point is a strong E-Leader counter, like that's their uh, response to going up against the E-Leader, but even though they have the zone and they have the lead right now, that's not a huge lead. A uh, police forfeit already back in control. They did lose two of their members. I do feel like the machine is a little bit more... Um, like, they're trying to up the aggression, so they went for the double machine. That's not uncommon. But again, police forfeit is doing such a solid job of locking in that mid. Mm, for sure, this nice going for the pick. Does manage to get the pick on the tri slosher. ASC Tenshi actually making this 96 work very well. Our unfortunate cancel with the Kraken by the bomb. Zen is trying to hunt down the machine and gets them. What? And please forfeit. Finally getting an edge up and managing to cut away ASC Tenshi's almost oppressive hold. But as I say that, that's two down on the side of ASC Tenshi. Zen at the wipers all the way, really far removed. Manages to get a trade, but still not enough. And points are starting to tick down for ASC Tenshi. Zyosha going for a pick with that E-Leader, not quite able to break the crap, but the damage has been done. A lot of special are being popped on the side of Police Forfeit. They managed to flip the zone, but that's a lot of resources invested. If if they don't manage to get some clean picks with this Inkjet, I believe ASC Tenshi will be able to have enough resources to push this path in. And usually when you see the, the 96 matchup, it with Splash Wall in his range, it does well against other shooters, but then we're seeing the double machine go up against the Tri and the Wiper. Like, when it, is there, none of these are straightforward shooters, but like, they're able to get these ledges, get these angles that you normally wouldn't be able to get with a normal shooter. And so get, they have the double buoy bump online as well, so like, they are, they are bunkering up, they are getting set to hold this for a good while longer. We'll have to see if Police Forfeit is able to respond in time. For sure, the classic bubbler spot coming out from the junior, which is all out zone, but look at this Kraken! It just gets a pick <laughs> on one. Can they find two? Not quite, but it, they, they broke us. They broke basically disrupted two specials. Oh, uh, can Zen's got a pick? Not quite. Stamp gets cancelled. But, but the machine on the side of ASC Tenchi looking to push forward and gets a pick, get, gets two. This 96 is making some work happen wow. and that is a knockout on the side of ASC Tenshi. We apologize dearly Sab. We completely lost faith in your 96 but you have shown what it is capable of. Yeah we saw like the 96 was not content for just sitting in mid and playing the good old defender. No they were they, when they had that crack and they were uh, behind enemy lines. They were flanking. They were controlling the carousel so well like they were not letting the e-leader set up at all you know they even going up against the inkjet they just no no backing down they just went at a full crack and, and just won that fight and then some two team fights that row right then we talked about you know in zones like it's important to win those team fights especially in the last couple of points and you know ASC tension showing that they were able to do so successfully Mm, for sure. And now we're going to Splat Zone's Manta Maria. Something that I believe is a great pick for ASC Tenchi if they choose to stick with this 96. It is, uh, the weapon definitely fav is favored on this map with those with all those uh, Kraken angles. Does struggle with the grading on in the middle of the map, but just being able to climb all those walls and force your way in is a great attribute to have on this map, which 96 has in spades. Now, it is also a great ball point stage. We cannot forget mm -hmm. that. It, all those angles for those ink jets, those fizzy bombs too, uh, to poke at in those bunker areas is going to be very difficult for um, for Please Forfeit to set up their E-Leader and and hold space. So, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think this is not a very good counter pick for Please Forfeit. I think it would have been a little bit better if... Um, if they went to a stage that did not favor AFC Tenchi that that hard. But regardless, what are your thoughts? I mean, I have to agree. Like, I am, so, like, this would be something I would see AFC Tenchi pick. You know, as you said, the 96 is strong, ballpoint is strong. Like, if the ballpoint is able to stay out of the sideline of that E leader, partly it's going to be incredibly difficult for any other of the weapons to touch them, especially when they're up on that grates. 
So they just have a lot of aggressive pressure, a lot of range to just hold down that mid. So I'm curious to see what Please Forfeit is thinking with this pick. But we're not going to be seeing a ball point or a 96, so maybe they don't have to worry. For sure, and wow, they actually went away with the, both the 96 and the ball point. As you said, we're going to a very traditional double splash, double machine composition. Um, already, oh my goodness, this is what we like to see, folks. Yet, already a special in the first few seconds of the game is going to be evened out by, um, by Yoshal and Please Forfeit. But... Man, it's just so many specials coming out from ASC Tenshi. Already a crab tank, already a tri strike, and please forfeit it, are struggling to um, to deal with this wildly different playstyle that ASC Tenshi is playing for. It seems that they have completely um, so laid down the ball point. They're going for a full more aggressive uh, strategy here. And they lose two of the members, but they were able to take down two of Fleet Forfeit, so it was evened out. And with that lead, all they got to do is cap the one zone to solid it out. And, you know, and with the double zone, you know, time is in the favor of the one in the lead. And so it's, for now, that was going to be ASC Tenchi. Mm, for sure. And we're, we're just seeing them play these great, this grading area so well. The, the E leader gets caught pretty overextended. And that's two down the side of Fleet Forfeit. And although. Although AC Tenshi does get the penalty, this this is a this is looking pretty bad for Police Forfeit. They're struggling to find their way in. They're constantly getting punished by ASC Tenshi. Um with just with how many specials, how much poke, how many bombs, how much bomb spam they have. But we're, we're seeing this leader struggling to set up with just so much AoE being churned out by the machine. Yeah, this is what we were talking about uh, or what we feared would happen. Uh, with them on Hammerhead, you know, the E-Leader was able to set up rather nicely and keep them from putting too much pressure, but now the tables have turned, they're not letting the E-Leader set up. There's just so much getting chucked out on bombs, sloshing machines, and whatnot. Now we're going to be seeing the Wiper trying to get a flank, but they're going to be pressured out rather quickly without getting a pick of it. Mm, for sure, and Peace Warfare is going to manage to get the flip on the zones, but at what cost? The Wiper's life it is and that might give Police Forfeit just enough space and enough of a man advantage to push this bubble and get a further man advantage. However, ne never mind, the, the junior stays alive and... Wait, no, never mind. That's a wipeout. Well, that's a wipeout on the side of Police Forfeit. ASA Tenshi looking to push forward. You can see this Neo Splash already basically in their spawn, popping those charge strikes, walling out the main slayers on Police Forfeit. However, they're very... Push, they're pushed forward very far. I'm not sure that's the best idea. They don't have that much support from their team. However, <laughs> regardless, they're still alive. Zenith pushing forward. This is a chaotic battlefield at the moment, folks. Zenith going for the zone cap, manages to get it, and that is going to be the end of ASC Tenchi's push at 39 points remaining. Yeah, so like Police Forfeit is finally able to make some headway, get some ground back. But again, like all you need is the one zone just stalled out in order to keep them from getting any points, and that is what AC Tenshi is going to do. Like Police Forfeit is going to have to just get a couple more picks and start pushing pack past the zone. And we have the hammer out; they're going to get a pick, they're gonna possibly get another, but it's going to end up in a trade. So the two down, that might be what they need to hold on to zone for a bit. But again, it's just so much aggression coming out from AC Tenshi. Is then she pushing with yet another pair of tri strikes? Oh jeez, this is this is the gameplay we like to see here, folks. But regardless, that's going to be lead given to please forfeit. As essentially already going one down. It is a three v three, but it is in the favor of please forfeit with their defenders. If they make it, manage to get the pick on that splash, that is huge. The machine evens it out, but it is too little, too late. That's two on the side of ASC Tenchi. Please forfeit, managing to pick off all these stragglers. Cleaning up the team fight, it is knockout position. That's two down. It's basically a delayed wipeout for ASC Tenchi with only the Neo Splash on the board right now. Manages to get a pick to gets two, but it's again it's too little too late, and that's the a wipeout and a knockout for uh please forfeit. Now that was rather fortunate. We saw ASC Tenchi, they were kind of falling back to uh, what was happening in winners finals. You know, they would have some nice aggression, they had a solid hold in the beginning, but then once they lost to the members, they kind of were staggered. You know, they weren't able to get a solid push going after that. They just lost so many, again, so many team fights they were able to lose. And then they just 
weren't able to keep their members alive long enough. You know, at, at that point, at the end, we saw the splash going to zone, but it was just too late. Mm, for sure. And yeah, it was just, uh, I, I won't lie, AC Denji was playing great at the beginning, but uh, with me pushing it all the way to 39 and getting some great holds, but, uh, but Police Forfeit was, was able to quickly adapt to the more special and sub spammy playstyle that AC Tenchi adopted for this map and quickly take it back as we saw. Now we are waiting on the counter pick for both teams, but guys, this is this is match point four, please forfeit. What do you think? Um, what do you think AC Tenchi needs under their belt right now, and why is it Splatoon's Hagglefish? <laughs> I mean, if they if they were comfortable with this with ballpoint, they are absolutely going to be comfortable with this for the splash combo they've been running. Like, again, like E leader has some nice uh, angles, but the less the one hagglefish, you got a lot of good cover, and when you're able to really push up and pressure that E leader, there doesn't there isn't quite as much they can do. But as we saw in that last match, they again they had some good angles, but they weren't able to keep the e leader and the rest of their mates out for long it's like once the e leader sets up in mid that's when things start going downhill for sure especially on this map spots on hagglefish it is notorious for having dominant sight lines for that e leader you know they get set up on that tent they can watch the left the right flanks and also basically all of the mid structure making it very difficult for ac, AC tenchi to move forward and having being forced to move up with specials but I do believe we're going to be seeing Ayazi Denshi move away from that double splash double machine and go back to the ball point 96. I'm willing to bet money on it just because I believe those those two weapons can thrive on this map. And I think she didn't bet any uh, money. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> as, as I said, good thing I did not bet any money. They're going even more, um, well, quote unquote, lame. Triple Splash Machine. We have not seen this for a good while, and Police Forfeit is definitely going to have a hard time dealing with such a composition. Two playing off of the right side, a very ambitious um, far right crab coming out from ASC Tenji, but it had its effect. That's three down on the side of Police Forfeit. It's only the Tresslasher, but the are behind. They need to get the pick. Yes, they do, and the damage is averted. Well, so ASC Tenji is able to get a very forward hold. Starting to get a little bit of pressure on Please Forfeit's plaid put Splash getting two. This is just looking like Please Forfeit's playground. But no, sorry, ASC Tenchi's playground with Please Forfeit struggling to deal with how many picks are coming out from ASC Tenchi. With but regardless, this Inkta is gonna make some stuff happen. At least contest the zone, and they do manage to flip it. Please Forfeit buying themselves a little bit of time, but this is looking a little bit like the last game. ASC Tenchi getting a strong early push all the way to the mid 30s. Oh, but Seb, is it that behind enemy lines? Like, I think that's a flank coming out from the Neo Splash, getting a nice triple right there. That's going to lock down ASC Tenchi zone once again. Please forfeit having to respawn. And like they, so far, they're doing a good job of making sure that ASC Tenchi can't set up in their plats on their um, tent like they want to, because if they're able to just keep them in the mid area, you know, that's gonna just allow them to get some openings in. And with the machine going down like that, that's gonna be one of their, their spearhead pretty much down. Mm, for sure, and uh, we're just seeing some very aggressive plays coming up from that Neil Splash. Now, I'm not sure if you saw, but that, the tri on the side of these four got absolutely demolished by four, or three or four first pops coming out from ASC Tenchi. That is disgusting, but it's not going to be enough. ASC Tenchi going three down. That is a full wipeout. And please forfeit. We already see their wiper Zenith getting all the way in their spawn, holding very aggressively. Hammer coming in. If they playing very very safe, just playing to stall really. Maybe going for some picks. Not quite. Gets picked by the machine. That is. They now have a man disadvantage on ASC Tenchi's plot. They are not going to be able to hold this aggressively and they find the tri uh sharking gets the pick mid jump unfortunate but that is probably going to be a zone flip for asc tenchi three down on the side of the forfeit it is only the e-leader and they're forced to back up because asc tenchi is slowly starting to push up with their more aggressive front line weapons i think that uh, that take back from asc tenchi was so good like they didn't have to burn any of their specials to get back in they were able to just win some of their 
1v1 fights, and then they had their specials ready for the zone, and now they have them ready once again to hold it. Only 15 penalty points remaining with 19 to the KO. If they're able to get the picks that they need, they could be able to bring this back and tie up the score once again, but there are a lot of the firepower coming out. We see the ink jets, we see the E leader trying to find those picks. You know, two members down, that might be the end of their push right there. Mm, yeah, we saw the the, uh, the landing from the ink jet being camped by Tri Strikes, and this Wea Bomb is going to get sniped by the E leader. That is oh, that's oh, two oh. picks from Yoshell. Great plays coming out from them. ASC Tenshi struggling to deal with this leader. I told you there was going to be very dominant on this map if ASC Tenshi doesn't manage to find an answer to it. And we are finally seeing that kick into gear. ASC Tenshi only have a Booyah Bomb and a Tri Strike uh, online, and Tri Strike's already been used, but they find the Wiper pushing yet again very far. And, and they're trying to find at least a neutralized zone here to buy themselves a little bit more time, but it's turning out difficult. That's two down on the side of ASC Tenchi. Please forfeit doing a great job of getting pick after pick after pick. That's going to be lead for them. Get a, a cheeky kill with the bomb is going to be enough, but ooh, a split second flip on the side of ASC Tenchi is going to at least take this game to overtime. Yosha holding very aggressive angles with this E leader gets a clean threads the needle. Gets oh a, my! Gets another. That's two down the side of ASC Tenchi giving giving please forfeit a lot of space to push forward. And with 20 seconds remaining, it's looking grim for ASC Tenchi. They need to make something happen and make it happen now. Yeah, they are slowly running time. It's just a matter. Of, are they going to get the knockout for it? Or time going to run out? But the booyah bomb is going to come out and the tri strikes. But they are still in control of zone. It does finally flip, but now they got to hold it. And with two members down, that's going to be diff incredibly difficult. Just the crab remaining. It's overtime. They are. Oh, the double. The double's going to uh, keep them in the game, but the hammer is going to say otherwise. That's going to be GG with Police Forfeit taking it 3-1. to one. Definitely a very close ending to a very close set. That was... That was... That could have gone either way, but ASC Tenchi just kind of struggling to, to come back after that slight lead switch. For um, for police forfeit and especially at the end, all those con all those really crucial picks coming off from the leader, just getting those niche angles and getting pick after pick after pick really freed up a lot of space for police forfeit to move forward. And just like that, folks, we now have our grand finals coming up soon. Please forfeit versus RR. We will be right back, folks. Stay tuned. This is a match you most certainly do not want to miss out on. Splatoon Stronghold, a stronghold for competitive Splatoon, providing resources to long timers and newcomers alike. If you're new to the competitive scene or still figuring out how to join, we have a getting started guide and plenty of other resources to help you in your journey. If you are a seasoned veteran, we still have plenty to offer. You can find and join tournaments as well as participate in our captain forum and find free agents and teams. Our mission is to make competitive Splatoon easily accessible to everyone. So what are you waiting for? Join the Splatoon Stronghold today.